Well, we're joined now, we're delighted to say in the studio, Deputy Leader of Reform UK, we say hello, good morning. Good morning. And, and congratulations at the election. Thank you. Um, Thank Richard you. Tice. The thing is, Richard, a lot of people are saying these people on the streets, they're speaking for you. They're saying that. Absolute nonsense. We've condemned all of the violence from any sides, all sides, comprehensively and it is completely unforgivable, it's inexcusable. What's strange is that uh, no Labour politicians are condemning the horrific scenes we saw in Birmingham last night. Jess Phillips reprimanded me for seeming to suggest that it was out of order for masked men to be marauding around, attacking people. She thought that was justifiable. No violence is justifiable. We're the only party, it seems, that's actually put that out there. Jess Phillips, the MP for, for the area. For the area, that's right, yeah. The disorder was taking place in Birmingham. And, you know, nobody would disagree. I think maybe Jess Phillips might be alone in that, but I think most people would say absolutely it has to be it's, even it, it's all. It's all, all we've got to have... We've got to have equal policing, equal politics, as opposed to what we've currently got. We've got two-tier politics and two-tier policing, and it's completely unacceptable. Right, I just want you to spell out to people what two-tier means. What two-tier means is, is, with regard to the politicians, they seem to be, um, if it's people from the left, then they seem to be excusing what went on yesterday. For example, you had a masked man come up behind a presenter from another channel um, swearing, abusing, pointing like a sort of a gun type scenario with their fingers. That seems to be excusable, but um, uh, they're essentially anybody who is uh, from perceived from the right, then they're far right thugs. It's all inexcusable. And that's, this is the sort of two tier politics yeah. I'm talking about. In the same way, two tier policing, we have seen that the police have been instructed to respond differently to certain groups of people who are breaking the law. Whether it, we've seen it with the pro-Gaza uh, uh, demonstrations, we've seen it with various other demonstrations over recent months. And that's one of the things that I think is really winding people up and upsetting so you, people. So you're saying the police response to what we've been seeing in the past week has been heavy, it's been forceful. I, I put and, and frankly, I, I, and it should be heavy and forceful yes. because these people are thugs who are breaking the law. But equally, it, they've got to apply in the same way when people are breaking the law on other marches. Likewise, last night, you cannot have gangs marauding through our cities uh, as we've seen. It's, it's got to stop. But it, was, they... it was the Black, Black Lives Matter um, comparison that, that Nigel Farage, your leader, made, which has prompted quite a lot of controversy, I think it's fair to say. I mean, Priti Patel, even a former Home Secretary, she said, frankly, it's completely different, closing down a number of it's roads. It's not different at all. Well, it's well, not let me different just at all. what she said. There's a clear difference between effectively blocking streets and roads to burning down libraries, hotels, food banks and attracting places of worship. Robert Jenrick said, I don't think any of us should be doing anything to make the job of police more difficult at this time. James Cleverly, politicians need to be careful about the language there you are. that they So what you've just read out, what you've read out... Slamming Nigel Farage's comments about two-tier policing. Because they're worried about the success of reform. The truth is, you, that is the proof of two-tier politics. The Black Lives Matter... Uh, demonstrations were breaking the law at the time. They were breaking lockdown. You had the current prime minister uh, bending the knee in uh, so in favour of dogs and horses. They should have helicopters. And... You're either going to impose the law or you're not. It's very simple. Well, they did impose the law. No, they were They didn't. They allowed them to break lockdowns and have demonstrations. And in some cases, uh, you know, there was uh, some very unpleasant scenes. And you're either going to have uh, equal application of the law or you're not. You're going to sort of willingly say well, well, we're going to have two-tier policing. There is policing without fear or favour, exactly as it should. And we all be. know and that is not true. Is a non-issue. Those are the and, words. And, and that is literally millions of people across the country are laughing at our Prime Minister for such utter, arrant nonsense. Mm. What is an issue, rightly or wrongly, is the views that these people hold, the people have been protesting over the past week. I put it to you that um, I, I suppose you wouldn't disagree with me that if there is any legitimacy to their views, they're losing the argument because of the way they are carrying things out. There's no legitimacy to violence and thuggery. We're all at that, right. and we were the first people to condemn it. And let me remind everybody, I was the first person to stand up for the Manchester police officers, yes. right, who were brutally and viciously attacked, when everybody else was claiming about police brutality. But, Richard, but, but, but the, the point about this, Eamon, is 
There is genuine concern which the politicians who have enabled mass immigration don't want to talk about out of absolute terrified humiliation. Yeah. There is genuine concern about the impact of mass immigration on our communities, on our society, this on our I'm prosperity, no on our public services. No one is talking about this. No one will address this. And however distasteful, however unpalatable, surely we've all got to come to a stage mm -hmm. where both sides are listened to and both sides are talked to and say, well, it, what is your problem? In a sense, Eamon, that's why we got 4.1 million votes at the general election, because we called it the immigration election. We were the only people prepared to actually say we've got to freeze immigration except non-essential healthcare related immigration. We've got to stop the boats by picking up and taking back. And I think that actually now has the overwhelming support of a, a significant, probably the majority of the British people. And we've got to have except, a responsible... Put it to you, Richard, that by these guys carrying out their actions and their protests the way they are, a lot of people will find it very hard to support them as a result. No one's, no one's supporting violence or thuggery, Eamon. There is a massive difference between that, which is horrific and break, breaking the law, and a genuine, respectful, open discussion, rational discussion about the right levels of immigration that works for both sides, whether it works for uh, the, the host nation or whether it works for people uh, coming in to work in a nation. And it's about, it's about working, it's about integrating, it's about speaking the language, and then you can have what I call smart immigration, great thing. We're all up for that, but mass uncontrolled immigration where people don't integrate, don't work, and don't speak the language is a very bad thing. I'm seeing it even in my own constituency and elsewhere, and, and we've got to be brave enough, however uncomfortable it is, to talk about uh, it. Richard, we know you. You're a gentleman, best of British, a perfectly lovely, delightful You're very man. kind. What a good morning. Well, well no, but it, you know, we know who you are and what you're about, but do you, you know, in your heart, worry about some of the language that some of your colleagues have used. I'm talking about Lee Anderson, who was had the Tory whip removed for making comments that were considered racist and Islamophobic, because there are people who say those words that he used, that the words of your party have legitimised the actions that we've seen by welcoming him into your party after he's been thrown out for racism. That's a member of parliament. If he can say things like that, then sure enough, I can read an arson manual and plot an attack on an asylum lawyer's house. Why not? I mean, people are making that because look, because what, what Lee language said what, language does matter. Absolutely right. What Lee said, he admitted it was clumsy, but it was neither Islamophobic and Islamophobic and it wasn't racist. And by the way, he was returned to Parliament with a significant majority this time around because he stands up for British working people who are furious at what mainstream politicians have done. I repeat, we condemn the violence and thuggery absolutely. We have stood up more than anybody to, uh, in, in favour of the police officers on the front line and the brave work they are doing. And, and the letters I get from police officers thanking yeah. me, so all of that. Um, but you know, we've got to have an open, rational debate. Yeah. That's why we've asked to recall Parliament, that the Prime Minister is refusing. Remember, David Cameron recalled Parliament in 2011 when we last had significant riots. If we're not prepared to discuss this, if we're going to hide it under the carpet, yeah. then actually bad things happen. But Richard, I, I would say to you there is no willingness to discuss this at all. And I, I, in fairness, I sit as a journalist, I watch other news programmes, and I hear you and your members being attacked consistently. And I say, well, that's not what they said. I've heard them condemning this violence. They do not stand for this. They do not uh, associate these people. Nor do I think a lot of these people openly associate themselves with you, in, in, in fairness. So where is the mainstream news media getting this and trying to make, and definitely making, a connection between you, your party, and the violence? We saw it during the general election with the, the lies perpetrated by Channel 4 and with, uh, with what they did there, which, which was a complete situation. They're terrified. They deny that, yeah. uh, They're absolutely... Well, they the establishment... I watched them last yeah. night. They said it last the, night. The, the, and the they also pointed yeah. to this channel as well. The truth is, to the that. establishment uh, and, and much of the academic media and world and, and part of the mainstream media are terrified because we tell it as it is. However difficult, however uncomfortable, we all want a successful, yeah. prosperous society uh, where we work together, integrate together, family, Richard, community... Richard, I, I would have to keep on saying on this, and I know people find this unpalatable, but however distasteful this is, you've got to talk to both sides. I speak from the Northern Irish situation and people say, oh, you can't sit down and talk to thugs. They did sit down and talk to thugs 
in Northern Ireland and they did it behind people's back and then they did it in front of people's faces. Mm -hmm. So what way do you see this going? If this is to be resolved and we have to have this resolved and I feel for people who are asylum seekers and migrants in this country and the fear that they must be going through at the moment. I think, frankly, I think millions of British people are afraid of what's happening to our country, about the lack of prosperity, about the inability to access public services, uh, about the, the lack of housing, housing rates. Millions of people are, are afraid of what's going on. And we've got to talk about it rationally. Uh, you're quite right about what happened in Northern Ireland. I'm not talking to any of these thugs attacking and burning down hotels or beating people. I'm just not doing it. OK, we can do that. We can have a rational discussion amongst politicians, amongst leaders, amongst community groups, uh, but we've got to do that, I think, by recalling Parliament and talking about it and being open about um, it. Richard, what about the criticisms that were levelled at Nigel Farage last week for sharing what a lot of people considered to be misinformation and certainly insinuating also that there was knowledge being withheld by the police, which a lot of people have said actually stoked many of the problems. Do you think that was unfair it, criticism? It was completely unfair criticism, once again levelled by the establishment and the politicians from the two main parties. All Nigel did quite rightly is saying you know, there are questions to be asked here. He then said, I don't know the answers, but I do think it is legitimate. And millions of people feel this, by the way. Every time there's a horrific incident, a horrific murder or stabbing, the uniformed soldier uh, who was brutally stabbed a couple of weeks ago, the horrific murder of those three children in Southport, instantly the police come out and say, it's non-terror related, it's mental health. How do they know so quickly? How are they so sure, really? Mm. You know, I think it's perfectly legit legitimate to ask these questions and to say, I hope you're telling us the truth. Yeah. This is very, very complicated. I mean, we may be on the verge of another global recession, which will only uh, add to all of these problems. A lot of these people are unhappy. They feel disenfranchised um, as well. How do you think that, what should the next step be in all of this? Because. We've still got a long part of the summer to go. Uh, you're absolutely right. The, uh, the police have got to be supported to do their work, even-handed, and to stop the rioting. And I'm completely in favour of these 24-hour courts. By the way, they should also apply to the rioters in Hare Hills and Leeds, thousands of them. Um, we heard very late how many of those people had been arrested. So, again, even-handed policing, stop the rioting, but at the same time, the politicians have got to come back and talk about what we talked about in the general election. We've got to have a sensible immigration policy that works for our country, that reassures people so that we can get some prosperity back, uh, improve, improve people's lives, and, and then we can actually get on top of our public services, healthcare, housing, so that works for everybody. And part of that debate, obviously a discussion about what kind of levels of immigration are acceptable and what people want to do about illegal migration and all the rest of it. Part of the debate also has to be about how we learn to live together again. And we've had Elon Musk saying we're on the brink of civil war. We've imported this kind of divided politics into this country. What's reforms proposals to try and help us become a more peaceful country so that we don't go down the route that Elon Musk... Well, actually, actually you know, so it's important. It is vitally important. And already we're seeing some wonderful pictures in the newspapers this morning of community groups, different communities, uh, different faiths coming together in the clear up. And that actually... You know, that, that's, that's the right response. It starts there, uh, but it does start with actually everybody recognising that the way for a successful society, you've got to work, you've got to integrate, and you've got to speak the language. What, what, what has been the reaction um, to the appointment of your new chairman? He himself, a Muslim, um, a, a big uh, successful businessman, um, Zia Youssef. There were a few comments from reform members saying that they didn't want a, a Muslim chairman. How has that settled down? Uh, news to me, I haven't heard any such comments. I've heard absolute... Uh, enthusiasm for a brilliant chairman, Zia, who I think was, uh, was in here yesterday. Uh, he's a fantastic chairman. And that actually is, is, in a sense, it reinforces that we want, uh, we want people from all faiths, um, all skin colour, genders, sexuality. None of us care. We just want to get on, be successful, grow our economy, make people more prosperous yeah. and improve the quality of life. In particular, though, it's for the lowest paid, the least well off. That's yeah. what our policies yeah. are about. Yeah, and, and that affects people who are Muslim or people who are not Muslim exactly. as well. Um, how frustrating is it for you, three weeks, four weeks after a general election, to be elected, to have this momentum behind you, and then to be told, told you're going on your holidays. 
Um, look, everybody is, is it, it's right to you know, have holidays, uh, but when there's a crisis... You're really wanting to get into work. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the reality is we've all had a very busy period, so we all, we all do need a break, but equally, we've got a national crisis, and I think that politicians should, should get back into the chamber and, and talk about it and say, right, we recognise there's a lot of uh, anxiety and frustration uh, in, in many communities around the country, and we've got to have a national endeavour to get on top of it. And I think to recognise that our policies about freezing immigration, except essential health and social care, about stopping the boats, would actually give people huge confidence and we can move forward.